we're going to look at the Earth as it moves around the Sun, according to the standard globe Earth model. So the Earth is here at time one, and at time two, the Earth will have moved and we'll find it over here. What's important here is that this is time one, and eight minutes later, this is time two. So in the course of those eight minutes, the Earth traveling at 66,000 miles per hour around the sun has traveled this huge distance. The standard model also tells us that around the Earth, there's this huge gravity well because of the Earth's gravity because of its density and its mass. And the moon orbits the Earth in large part because of the gravity well around the Earth. And so the moon is constantly falling in towards the Earth along the gravity well. So what happens with our photon? Our photon leaves the sun when the Earth is here at time one. Eight minutes later, the Earth has moved to position two at time two. In those eight minutes, as the Earth travels, the gravity well around the Earth obviously travels with it because the Earth is the cause of its gravity well is what we're told in the standard theory. And so the photon that left the sun eight minutes ago is on its path towards the Earth, but it's being warped, its path is bent or curved because space-time itself is curved. Here's the problem. The photon is moving with this curvature, that's the curvature it's taking into account, when it leaves the sun. But when it arrives, the Earth is up here, and the curvature of space-time has changed. It's moved over here. Now, here's the crux of the problem. Photons, as was proved with the delayed choice experiments, take current information into account, which means that when a photon is detected by you, when it hits your eye and you see something, you see the blue sky, that's the moment in which that photon collapses from a probability wave into a particle and it's detected by you. And that's the moment in which the past history, which is the path history of the photon is created. But the photon takes current information into account. And so the photon necessarily would have to take the curvature of space-time as it is in the moment you detect it into account as it creates its past history. Because that's the only information that's available to it in that moment. Because the photon doesn't have enough information in that one snapshot of time, in that one moment, to guess at the trajectory that the Earth is on. The photon doesn't know if the Earth is moving from over here to over here. And it also doesn't know if the Earth is moving this way, but also left to right as our entire solar system swings towards the great attractor. It also doesn't know that the Earth and the Sun are also rising up as we move toward the galactic disk, or actually since 2012, roughly, away from the galactic disk. In order to calculate the trajectory of the Earth, across all these different movements, a photon would need to be able to see a pattern. And in order to see a pattern, you need information at different points in time to see a pattern in movement trajectory. So the photon doesn't have information about the Earth's trajectory because it doesn't have the ability to see the pattern of movement over time. The photon only has the information that's available in the present moment of detection. And so, if the photon is here when it's detected, then it will take into account the space-time curvature that we find here around the Earth. And the path created will have to be in accordance with the space-time curvature around the Earth here at time two. The problem with that, of course, is that if 
we follow the curvature at time two, it won't lead us back to the sun. It won't lead us back to where the sun was eight minutes ago because the sun also has an enormous gravity well and the sun is also moving over those eight minutes. And so the gravity well of the sun itself has shifted and changed. And so the photon that's creating its past history of where it traveled through space only has the information at time two to recreate its trajectory. So it has to take the space-time curvature as it exists at time two to plot its path history. And so it can't, won't, necessarily, cannot create a path history for a sun and earth and space-time curvature as they were eight minutes ago. Because it has no way of formulating that information from the information available in the moment of detection. Do you see? Basically what it comes down to is the photon leaves the sun eight minutes in the past, but it only takes information into account eight minutes later when it's detected. And in those eight minutes, the gravity wells around the Earth and the Sun have changed, not only because the position of the Earth relative to the Sun is different, but also because the, the position of the Moon is different and the position of Mars is different. So all these other bodies that are also distorting space-time curvature around them, that's all changed in those eight minutes. But the photon has no way of reconstructing the earlier curvature because it has no way of figuring out what is moving in which directions. It only has the information available to it at time two when it's detected. And so because of that, the photon would never be able to leave the sun at the point of origin at time one. It would only ever retrace a path leading to the sun where it is at time two, but the sun isn't at the location of time two at time one. So it, the photon would never be able to trace its path back to the sun. Do you see? And so this in and of itself completely disproves the entire Einsteinian view of gravity space-time curvature, and it disproves the globe Earth rushing madly through space. The entire theory, the entire standard model falls apart when you apply information that we find in one maybe more esoteric piece area of physics, and we take it back to the main domain that, that maybe more people are familiar with. And that's the problem with science today, is that these, these little bits of new information that are being found on the fringes that destroy some of the fundamental elements of our standard models are acknowledged, but they're not really taken into account in that the standard models aren't being rejected when they really should be. The theories that are disproven aren't being rejected when they necessarily must be. You cannot accept the results of delayed choice experiments with particles and accept the standard model of gravity and the earth and the sun and what's happening between them and how fast they're moving, the fact that they're moving at all. These, you can't reconcile these, these different pieces of information. And so what do we do with this? Well, one of them, the gravity, space-time curvature, that's just a theory. We don't actually have strong experimental evidence that proves that to be true. Whereas the delayed choice experiment has been done and replicated, and it has been shown to be true experimentally. We have evidence we have reproducible evidence that the delayed choice experiment leads to the outcome 
the same outcome when you replicate the experiment. The photon takes current information into account when it's detected and it creates its path history. That's experimental evidence, that's data. You can't just wish that away. You have to incorporate that into your model. And if you can't incorporate that into your model, which we've seen clearly here, you cannot, then you have to reject your model because your model is wrong. It doesn't fit the reality that we observe. It doesn't fit the outcome of our experiments. It, it, it's the wrong model. It's a bad model. It's just, it's the wrong theory. It's, it doesn't work. You have to reject it. The results of the experiment on the delayed choice can be rejected because they've been replicated and they've been tested, retested. The experiment's been run by different groups, by different people, um, but using different equipment in, in slightly different formats. And so we know that those results are sound. We know that, that the problem with this discrepancy doesn't lie in the delayed choice, photons creating their past in the moment of detection. So then we must conclude that the problem lies with the unproven theory of space-time curvature causing gravity, of the Earth and the Sun rushing madly through space, of photons leaving the Sun, traveling, bending around space-time curvature, as we're told light bends due to gravity, that whole theory is disproven, was disproven in the late 90s. It's 30 years later and, and physicists have still, to this day, failed to talk about this with the public. Why doesn't the public know this is important? And nobody knows. Now you know, and I know, so we know. <laughs> so let's talk about this. And uh, to me, this is the most convincing proof that the standard model is wrong and must be rejected. Hashtag flatter. <laughs> Good night. Subscribe, subscribe to my channel. And, and then whoosh, we're just throwing you into space. Like, give it a thumbs up.